you are back in the shop. This week on the channel, we're gonna build a freaking longboard. Now, I got a request to build one as a gift, and I thought, what a cool woodworking project. So stick around. I'm Stoner Erickson from Erickson Design Company, and let's build something. Ta-da! We're gonna hop right in here and check our wood pile. I have some walnut and some hard maple, and I'm gonna measure and see if I can get a total of 11 and a quarter by 36 inches out of it. That's gonna be the size of the longboard. Next, I'm gonna take this over to the rigid joiner, and I'm gonna joint one side of it so I have a square edge to cut off of. I have about 48 inches off the end of the joiner before I hit the dust collection for the joiner and the bandsaw here. Then I'm going to break the wood down. I'm going to go three and three quarters off the maple, one and a quarter off of the walnut, and then I'm going to cut a half inch strip off of one side of the maple for the centerpiece. Now, as I was cutting this, you can see once oxygen and air gets inside of the wood, it really bowed it out, hooned it out. So I'm going to take the one that got bowed and hooned out over to the joiner and I'm going to straighten it and then cut off the other side as well. And that fixed the problem. Next, we're going to get ready for the glue up. I'm going to glue up on top of my table saw here after I'm happy with the way it comes together. And I have this uh, large paper that I'll put over top of the table so I don't get glue dripping down all over my saw. I'll grab my bar clamps and I'll kind of pre-set them up to where they're ready to go. Now, I use parchment paper to cover the clamps so that the glue won't stick to it. This is a great, easy method so glue doesn't get all over my clamps. I'll just rip that up and kind of wrap it around the bar clamp itself. Then I'll liberally spread this Titemon 3 glue. I put a lot on. This is going to be the whole thing that holds it together. It's kind of like making a butcher block, but I'm not using biscuit joints here, just the glue. And then I'll line it up and I'll goose it down ever so slightly going more and more on each clamp to get it tight. I'll put a couple bar clamps over the top, make sure everything is happy and we'll let that set up overnight. Do as much glue cleanup as I can when the glue's wet. And then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull out the flip top table for the planer and I'm gonna slowly plane down the other side to get it to my desired thickness. Now you've seen me use this flip top table many a times. It's nice to have two tools on one table, it takes up less space in the shop. And I really love this DeWalt planer and I'll just get it set up. For dust collection for the planer, I could have built like a complicated dust collection system, but I actually just ordered this dust right bag. It was like 30 bucks. It goes down to two microns. And because I had a dust assisted fan in the planer, this gets 99% of the dust. It is super awesome in the best way I could do it. Flip it back to the sander being on top because that's generally what I use it on. And then I'm going to grab the crosscut sled and I'm going to cut off the snipe. Snipe is basically from the rollers. It takes about three inches, a little divot out. You can see that here, and I don't want to have to deal with that and sand it out. So I just, I just account for that, make it a little larger, and then I cut those pieces off. If you like fun and creative videos like this, hit that subscribe button. Do it, and do it now. Now, there are a few holes in some knots that need to be filled in the walnut. So I'm gonna take this five minute epoxy and some sawdust and I'm gonna make my own really hard, dense wood filler that will actually come out really smooth at the end and you'll never tell it was there. I'm going to pack that in there really aggressively and then I'll clean it up at the end. I'm actually gonna be carving this right now so I'm gonna put a piece of Tyvex tape over it to hold it in there. And it worked really, really well. I've done that many times. I'll go ahead and pop up the X-Carve and get that set up. You know, this is a table that I built that you can see in some of my other videos and it makes so much more room in the shop when you're having this large 48 by 40 inch table. It just slides against the wall and just gives me so much more extra room in the shop. So I'm gonna set the Z-Probe and I'm gonna get to carving. If you don't have an X-Carve, the way to around that would be just using a jigsaw and laying out a template, folding a piece of paper in half, 
making your template for your long board, unfolding the paper, drawing it on top of the piece of wood, and then cutting it out with your jigsaw. Um, that's a great way to do that. And then for the graphic, just order a sticker and then polyurethane over top of the sticker. I'll break down the table to get it out of my way because I won't be carving anything else on this tonight. And that gives me so much more room in the shop, like I said. Amazon was so gracious to deliver the wheels and the trucks I ordered for the long board. Now they were 29 bucks for the wheels, trucks, bearings, the whole setup, and it's totally worth it. And the ride's really smooth. Next I'm gonna fill the epoxy of the carve I did of my logo and my catchphrases with this green, lime green epoxy to kind of match the wheels. Now I made a major mistake here when I was going to pop the bubbles uh, with some heat and to pull the bubbles to the surface like running a torch over top of it I burned out the torch and screwed it up So I went back and I added like a multicolor epoxy carve and I didn't mix it thoroughly and you can see here all this extra inks coming out so I totally totally screwed the pooch on this one but failure success as long as we keep trying and I started to pull a little bit of the epoxy out and it was just a mess, so I thought I'll reline it up in the X-carve and I'll recarve out the epoxy. And that way I can just use this same blank. Unfortunately, I had done too much damage to some of the smaller pieces in between the letters with my knife. So this wasn't gonna work and I was super bummed, but it seems like such a waste of wood. Now this carves only about 3 16 deep, so I could actually plane this down and still have almost a half inch piece of this and make something else out of it. Luckily, I have an extra blank with cherry, walnut, and maple, and so I was really lucky. I'll just use that one, and then I'll remake this blank when I have extra time this weekend. The total carve time on this was about an hour and 20 minutes with both cards. I did two steps cards here. Now I'm gonna go slower with the epoxy this time so I don't screw it up. I'm gonna tape around where I'm gonna put the epoxy. I ran out of that green coloring, so I'm gonna use blue. It won't match the wheels, but that's the color of my logo, so I'm gonna try to match that color as close as I can. I'll slowly pour it into the letters. Then I'm gonna take this inside. I'm gonna let it dry around 70 degrees inside. It's a little cold here right now and this will actually level out and spread out as it dries. I did take a torch and pull the bubbles up. I also did this right here. I shook it really well to try to pull the bubbles up and that tend to work. The carve actually came out really nice and the epoxy laid really smooth on it. You know, don't forget to leave me a comment, guys. I love hearing from you and I'll totally comment back. I'm going to sand off the epoxy. I'm going to use a belt sander with an 80 grit and an orbital sander with 120. And I'm going to work my way all the way down to 220. Um, this does take a little bit of time. I tried running these through the planer and it just chipped out the epoxy. So I try not to put a ton of epoxy on so it doesn't take that much time to get it out. I'm going to measure out and lay out where the trucks are going to go and I'm going to pre-drill those holes. And then from the top side, I'm going to countersink where those screws and bolts are going to be set. That way they're flush with the top of the board. I made a template for the tail of the long board. That way I can just mark it and I can cut it out with a jigsaw. And so like I said, you can see here, if you didn't have an X-carve, you could just make this whole thing with a jigsaw. Um, it's super easy. I'm going to move it over to the rigid oscillating sander and I'm just going to do kind of a, a surfboard sand around it just to get a nice smooth edge on the back and the way that the tail is. I'm going to round over the back as it comes out square. I actually like this. I made another one of these and the tail was pointy and every time I try to kick the board up it hit that tail so I kind of cut the end off to make it flat. I'll do a quarter round over bit on the back side of it and then I'll do a nice little hand sand on that. Next I'm going to put the grip tape on the top and I had an idea here to actually route off that edge so I'm going to take a roller get that really tight cut off a little bit of the excess and then I'm going to take the quarter round over bit and round over that tape into it. This came out way better than the last one that I built and I really think I'll do that every time. Now I'm going to make a little cutout or notch out for the wheels when you're really shredding the gnar or grinding. The wheels are going to want to hit the boarded, so I want to make a little extra relief cut 
That's why I just use a grinder with an aggressive 40 grit and I grind out just a nice little patch for the wheel to have like a little concave so it doesn't hit the board if you're really taking sharp turns. And I'll just use a sander and sand that up to clean it up. Now for just freehanding that with a grinder, I'm actually pretty happy with it. And they're all uniform, they look great. Now I'm gonna take some polyurethane and I'm gonna run it over the back. This is one of my favorite parts because you can see the carve come through and all the shiny wood and the grain come through, the cherry and the walnut, and I'll get that on there. Then I'm gonna to move to setting up the trucks and the bearings and the wheels. Uh, this is just standard stuff. There's little instructions there. There's a, a spacer in between the bearings and I'm just gonna goose those down and get that put on. Now here I did make a critical error. I had to reverse this. I have the trucks on backwards. And so when I first got on this, it was super squirrely and I was like, what's going on? And then I had to go back and read the instructions and put them on the correct way. The actual bolts go on the outside, not on the inside facing each other. But the carve came out so awesome. And this is such a cool, fun project. Let's see if it works. Now that is way too much fun.